celebrating Santa Lucia Festival. And God's grace and peace be with you. I'm Pastor Deb Domeyer, and we welcome you to First Lutheran Church here in Paxton, Illinois. We're at 301 South College Street, and we welcome those who are here with us in person, as well as those who are visiting us virtually on Facebook. Our theme for today is Enlighten Our Darkness, and that is perfect along with the Santa Lucia Festival. As we know, uh, this past weekend, the terrible, terrible devastation of the storms and tornadoes that ripped through the United States. And we have what is called the NALC, the North American Lutheran Church Disaster Response. It's led by Pastor David McGeddon, and you can find it at Disaster Response at thenalc.org and if you would like to send an offering or relief funds you can send them to NALC 2299 Palmo Drive Suite 220 New Brighton, Minnesota 55112 and I will put this on our Facebook page so people have access to it Certainly, our hearts are breaking over the many homes and businesses that were destroyed as well as the life that was lost during uh, these terrible storms. So as the governors and the uh, mayors have requested uh, for prayers, so please pray deeply for everyone. We'd like to wish a happy birthday to Carol Fox, as well as a happy birthday to Jesse uh, McKees, and happy anniversary to Flavel and Diane Hyman. I believe that your anniversary is today, isn't it? Yeah, so give them a hand. Today's their anniversary. <laughs> happy anniversary. Thank you for being in worship with us and celebrating God during your anniversary. We appreciate that. Um, the council has approved $3,000 of matching charitable contributions. Um, they should be turned into the office today. And so the church will have matching dollar for dollar up to $3,000. Put your donation in an envelope and address it to your charitable agency of your choice along with letter or paperwork that's needed. And the church will add the second check and mail it before the end of the year. It's a great way for Christmas giving. And also our Christmas baskets. Um, are due today also, so be sure to bring those in. And cookbooks um, have arrived, and the cost is $15, and the proceeds go to First Lutheran Youth Organization. And so if you would like one of those um, uh, cookbooks, you can talk to uh, Kevin or Susan Hansen. And then the uh, next FLC Paxton blood drive is Monday, December 20th, so there's still time to sign up online or with Kevin. And on the 20th, it's from 3 o'clock to 6.30. And so if you'd like to give blood, be sure to sign up for that. Um, there are attendance books in your pews. They're red, and so be sure to pass those on down uh, for folks to sign in. Are there any other announcements for the congregation? Tammy, the Christmas pageant, the Christmas pageant. Come on up and tell us all about it. Um, the kids are also staying after today from 10.15 to 10.45 to practice through with sound for the program next week. During the church service next week, we will have our Christmas pageant in place of the sermon. And so it's a good time to come, watch your kids, and they will practice for about a half hour after church today. Because we were busy practicing, and I know that this is like a beautiful time of the year with the kids and they're white and they're red, um, after we're finished with the St. Lucia part, we're going to have them just kind of line up right along here if anybody wants to snap a quick picture, because um, I know that it's always kind of a special memory too. So, um, so enjoy the St. Lucia, and next week too, we hope to see you again.
And then also I'd like to remind folks one last thing. Um, Christmas Eve service this year will be 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. So be sure to write that down in your calendars, 5 p.m. and 11 this year. Once again, God's grace and peace be with you. Please rise and turn to your neighbor for the passing of the peace. Good morning. God's peace be with all of you. God's peace, Grace. God's peace. God's peace, Chuck. God's peace be with you. Let us prepare our hearts with confession and forgiveness this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is, Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus. You can find that in your Lutheran Book of Worship, number 30.
and shining into the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Please be seated. We continue our worship with the singing of the choir.
The grace of our love of our God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers and come to us. Bring light into the darkness of our hearts, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading of the lessons. Good morning. Our first lesson comes to us from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your ha hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrows for the appointed feasts I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. The second reading come to, comes to us from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thus ends the reading.
please rise. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Our holy gospel for this morning comes from St. Luke, the seventh chapter, verses 18 through 28. You can find it in your pew Bibles on 730. Jesus and John the Baptist. John's disciples told him about all these things, calling two of them. He sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, are you the one who has come or shall we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had been diseased. Sickness and evil spirits gave sight to many who were blind. So they replied to the messengers, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. After John's messengers left Jesus and began to speak to the crowds about John, what did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swaying in the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in the palace. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messengers ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no other greater than John. Yet the one who has the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Friends, would you stand up? Thank you. Everybody stand up with your lights. Santa Lucia is one of the most popular early saints. Santa Lucia Day is celebrated in the church, businesses, hospitals, and schools. Holidays is also observed in people's homes. She had a wide spread throughout the world, and Santa Lucia is well known through Sweden. Santa Lucia was from a wealthy family in Sicily, Italy. She dedicated herself to Christianity and the love of Jesus Christ. Her belief angered some people. How could such a beautiful person anger anyone? Could you imagine? She was reported to authorities who um, did not approve of Christianity or following Jesus. And as a result, they tried to punish her and hurt her for loving Jesus many times. Guess what, friends? She survived and survived happily. Santa Lucia Day is a festival day uh, known as Santa Lucia or Saint Lucy and one of the earliest Christian martyrs. And she has, um, marks the beginning of the Christmas season in Scandinavia in regions like Sweden, Norway, or Denmark. And today, you are... Uh, Everyone from different parts of the world, you don't have to be from Sweden, Norway, or Denmark to celebrate this day, so you can join in as an official Scandinavian today. And Santa Lucia brings hope and light during the darkest time. In Scandinavian countries, many towns vote for their Santa Lucia, and the festival begins with a procession of children singing uh, with our Santa Lucia. They wear white robes with red sashes and green evergreens in their hair and candles on their head. And they are followed by young girls and boys also dressed in white. 
The girls wear tinsel halos or belts and carry candles. And the boys wear hats, and sometimes they carry can candles or stars. Now, at this time, our eldest daughter, usually the eldest in the family, dresses as Santa Lucia. And along with our young people here, they're going to deliver some treats out there to you. Santa Lucia, you can go ahead and do that. She is now, she serves coffee and buns known as Lusta Cocker. Uh, to her grandparents, and happy Lucana Lucia Festival to everyone. Boys and girls, there's treats right there in that basket. You can take one and take it out to somebody. Go do that now and then come on back. Here they come. Can you find somebody to deliver a gift to? Somebody special. I'm going to put you right up here. And right here. And over this way so you can see it. Can you stand right in there? Come on over this way so they can see you better. You guys can stand right there. Turn around right here. Turn around right here. Right here, William. Right here. Right here. Melanie, you want to come stand right up here next to William? All right. Right here. Turn around. Ready? Everyone say, Happy Santa Lucia Day. Out that way, smile. Everybody say, Happy Santa Lucia Festival. There you go. You guys can head on out to the back to the other one at a time. Come on. There you go. God's grace and peace be with you this morning and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The question we ask today, as John the Baptist is imprisoned, is who is your Savior? Who is your Savior? Who is the one that you hold in your heart? There was a man named... Um, Diedrich Bonhoeffer. And Diedrich Bonhoeffer it was a Lutheran pastor during World War II. And during that time, he was accused of speaking out against Hitler and against the Nazis and against the Holocaust. And it got him into deep trouble because his faith he held dearly. And so they sent him behind prison doors. So you can imagine those, those metal doors slamming behind him. And there he was imprisoned, just like John today. His faith held him to that, that place of, of, of faith with Jesus Christ that he could not ignore what was going on around him. And so he had to proclaim this. And, and so being behind those prison bars under Nazi Germany, um, they, they also accused him um, because at that time there was a conspiracy to, to kill Hitler. And so uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer was also 
accused of that crime also. And he paid with the penalty of death. He was, he was hanged uh, for his love of Jesus and for him proclaiming what was right in a very tumultuous time. So here we have today John the Baptist, and he is in prison, and he's asking Jesus, are you the one, are you the Messiah, are you the one who is coming to save us? And, and just like Deidre Bonhoeffer, he was, he was imprisoned for his belief. You remember just a couple weeks ago, John was out in the wilderness right, proclaiming the repentance and, and return to, to God. And now here he is behind bars for what? Doing all the right things. Following God. Proclaiming repentance. And how that can happen even to us in this day. That, that you can have this great love for God and for Jesus Christ. And yet it can feel like sometimes like it's a prison, like you're being locked behind those doors. And it's like that darkness is, is coming in. And you wonder, when are those doors going to break and the chains to be removed? And for that freedom and love of God to come. And so as, as John sent his disciples to Jesus to ask the question, how does Jesus respond to us today? He says, you know what? He was so busy that day, he couldn't even take a lunch break with those disciples of John. It had to be, it had to be a working following. They had to follow him everywhere. And where was he going? Do you remember? To feed the poor, it said. Sight to the blind. The lame were walking. Those who could not hear could hear. An incredible, powerful ministry taking place throughout the countryside. And how is that for us today? How are we as Christians under that, that same power that John and Jesus were experiencing in the ancient day? How are we experiencing some of those same things today, right? There, there's still those bondages of, of alcoholism, right? People, people's hearts are, are locked up because of, of that kind of illness, drug abuse. What about those things that, that we just don't talk about, you know, behind the scenes? Discord. Maybe even family problems. In a time like this, depression and sadness is abound. And sometimes you think the weight of the world holds your heart just like those prison doors that held John in prison or held Diedrich Bonhoeffer in prison. And maybe even some days it might feel like that noose that was around Dieter Bonhoeffer is very close to you too. And in the midst of that, there is this enlightenment in the darkness that Jesus Christ is everything. That, that, that power of repentance and the mercy and forgiveness that, that he bestows on us as well as he did for the folks in the ancient days. He pours out mercy, forgiveness, and brings light into our lives so that what, so those doors can be busted open, those chains can be broken free, and that there is a powerful gift in life that, that he has given to you. Even in the midst of storms like, like we have experienced in this country this past weekend. Terrible storms ripped through six states. 
They were just showing this morning in Kentucky how everything in one town completely devastated. I had a phone call this morning from one of my friends who lives in Kentucky. And, and they said it was. It was like climbing. Their whole home came down around them. And it was like climbing out of a prison. And for, for the storm and the darkness and the terrible winds that came the night before in the morning, in the midst of everything being destroyed, there was this beautiful morning as if the storm had never happened. And that light and that peace can be in our hearts, even in the most wildest storm there is in our lives. And to hold on to that gift as they came out, they, they, they thanked the Lord for surviving the night. They, they found their family, and then they started checking on their friends in the neighborhood. And now everybody's taking a look at how they can plan for the future. But they look around and, you know, everything's down. We know that from what happened in Gifford not so long ago. We know how devastating storms can be. But even in the midst of that kind of darkness, to cling on to Jesus Christ, who, who gave his, his all for us, and, and it's so, what do I want to say, like mind-blowing that we cannot wrap our minds around the complete gift and the coming of Jesus brings to us that, that is dying on the cross. Our almighty Father in heaven, God gave us his son to die for us. Lowly sinners though we may be. Right? Most days we, we make it, but then there's other days where we really struggle. And that's where Jesus comes to you. In, in dying on the cross, shedding his blood for us, for, for our sin, so that we can give it over to him and live this new life free. And in that light, that lightment, that light that comes to us in the darkness, just as Santa Lucia came to us uh, this morning, bringing her light to us. Hold on to your faith during these times. Because it's a difficult time. Uh, we have whole generations that, that don't even want to hear about God or Christ. Hold on to the faith. Be willing to share and to bring that good news to all. This we pray in his name today. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Comfort, comfort, now my people, Lutheran Book of Worship, uh, 29, please rise. <laughs>
Together, let us profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy of righteousness, peace, and love that you lavish upon us in Jesus. Thank you for every moment of healing and forgiveness and hope that happens in this sin-damaged, death-shadowed world. Whatever our circumstances, give us hearts that are filled with everlasting joy and hope. Give us grace to thank you for Jesus and to lead our lives in joy knowing him. Lord, in your mercy. Make your church beautiful with faithfulness and holiness and joy. May its love for Jesus gladden our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We remember before you those for whom it is easy to ignore. Prisoners, refugees, people in mental institutions, nursing homes, homeless shelters. Help us to shed light of your love upon them and also the light of human kindness. Help us to speak your words of peace and forgiveness and salvation to them, and also words of understanding, encouragement, and friendship. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, make the leaders of every nation acknowledge your justice and govern in obedience to it. Let your faithfulness spring up from every human heart and your righteousness look down from the sky. Strengthen, protect, and guide our military, first responders, and aid workers. Show them our steadfast love and directness and deeds of righteousness in their path, and bring the blessing of peace to us all. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, help all who suffer, and help them to turn to the Father, who made the deaf to hear, the blind to see, and the lame to walk through Jesus Christ. We especially pray for the outbreak of deadly storms and tornadoes that have ripped through Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Give people who are in these storm-torn areas confidence to lift their needs to you in prayer and thanksgiving that you have brought them to this new day. Grant them peace and love and guard their hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And for all these things we lift up before you, the many prayers that are silent upon our heart, and for the things that you know that we need. We pray in the name of the power of Jesus Christ and commend them to your mighty hand of mercy. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
Please rise. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Prepare the Royal Highway, Lutheran Book of Worship, 26. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.